Is it? Is that better? Yeah, yeah, much better, mate. That's fine. That he'll uh, oh, he'll cool. do the job. So um, I was just going to talk about your last game because I came down to see you at um, Hereford game. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you How did you feel you got on there? Um. Yeah. I. I mean. I. Th- I think we had. We had moments of like good play and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't massively, massively disappointed. I just felt that there was, there was something missing. Um, yeah, Lewis. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that, that was pretty big. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that, that, I, I think that was probably the biggest bit. And like, because we had like people in the squad that were uh, like, not necessarily used to playing with us and it was their first time like in the, in, in the Premiership game and stuff. Like it was a big, big step up for them. Um, I think they did really well, but yeah, I, I mean, on the whole, I think, yeah, it's just missing something. Just a, a little bit more warming up into the season, maybe still blowing off the cobwebs. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly that. But it's, it's getting better. I mean, the, fir- the first game against St. Helens, I think we would, like, even, I mean, even though we had Lewis and stuff, like, it still felt like there was something, like, Missing from the attack and defence, and it, it felt a bit like this this time, but like a little bit better. So I'm hoping it's going against you. You actually, yeah, for, for the yeah, language. Yeah. Well, it worked out well for you last season, anyway, didn't it? What, where did you guys end up? Was it third or fourth? Third. Yeah, third, third. Yeah. That's not bad for the first time in Super League, is it? Nah, nah. We we're really happy with last year, and I, that's probably part of it because we've done so well last year, like. Right? Expectations are a little bit higher this year. Big victim of your own success. Yeah, yeah, and there, there's new teams as well, and I, I think, especially because it's like Hereford had just come up this season, we really sort of wanted to make a an impression, and it it, it didn't go to plan. Well, hats off to Hereford. They they they, they were a good team. I mean, we played them bef- in the first round. Um, we had a really good game with them as well. By no means, I mean a lot of them are the from the Wales international team out there, the players in Hereford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an experienced team. And I, don't, I don't want to take anything away from them because they, they played really well. Um, and I think they seemed really like quite well drilled like uh, uh, in attack and defence, uh, yeah, especially attack. Yeah, I thought they just had really good hands. They, they, they're a good close-knit team. And they, had, they, really got, they, they really were a lot like the, um, the Welsh international team out there play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they definitely. You could definitely tell they were used to playing with each other. Um, but on the most part, it was yeah, it was difficult to defend against a lot of the time. Um, especially, especially because they, they got over to one wing. Yeah, oh god, yeah, you can't tackle Higgins. I j- just have to stop the chair. I just said, or, or you get, you got to commit to diving over the top of him. And then once you miss the tackle, <laughs> yeah, you just get to stop his chair. I, I, I don't know how else to do it really. Make sure he falls over. That's what I do. Yeah, I tried, I tried to do that a couple of times, like getting him to ride on the rim bit. Like you tell me that he's got a bit too mass for me, too much mass for me to. Uh... He's got the weight advantage on you, hasn't he? Yeah, big, yeah, big time. I t- I'll get him next next game, maybe. I'll, I'll get him. There was there was one time where I felt him start to go up, and I was like, just one big turn away. But I think I'd done it too too soon. I was a bit too excited about him. It's all practice. Uh, the, uh, yeah. yeah, so we're talking about your weight disadvantage with Higgins, obviously. So you're, you're a single amputee. You've lost your leg. How did you actually lose your leg, James? That was in a motorbike accident in um, 2013. Uh, in, in short, I hit a tractor on the motorway and then got hit by a lorry, a car and a van. Um, One so after the other? Sorry? One after the other, one after the other, yeah, like in, just in succession on the motorway. I got I got CCTV images of the uh, the like stills of it. Ooh, of okay, yeah, up. we won't be putting them up. Yeah, I t- I t- I try and get, I try and get them across. <laughs> we, we, yeah, like, uh, were, were you were uh, talking to Sebastian at England camp like, uh, last England camps when he he was showing his picture of his leg? Oh yeah. He's got the yeah. like the pictures from in the hospital when it, when he just lost it sort of thing, and I'm like I I can't I can't look at that if it was my leg. Proper grim, is it? Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think you can. I, I th- yeah, I think you can. 
I, I guess it's different when you're in a situation like you've been through the worst of it anyway. So it's, it's just yeah, sort of I intriguing. I suppose like like it's completely different and properly playing it down, but it's like nails on a chalkboard. If someone scratches it, it makes you cringe. But if you do it, it's not so bad. Exactly that. Yeah, that's a good analogy. That yeah. 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 yeah exactly that. I think. Yeah, because I, I'm still quite actually. Yeah, I'm still quite grossed out by like, other people's photos and stuff. But like thinking about it, but if it's if it's my own, a lot of people have. Um, uh, leg anniversaries, leg leg anniversaries, don't they? And you, I see them. Uh, Fa- yeah. Fabian Castillo from uh, Australia has does it. He puts his pictures up every year. Uh, yeah, I've seen quite a few people do that. Yeah, yeah. I t- I normally forget the I, I normally forget the dates to be honest. Like the first first couple of years, like, I can't remember. And I remembered uh, um, my mum had come into my room once and was like, it was like the end of the day. And was like, you're right. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm good. Yeah. Like, how's your day been? You know, I was talking to her and it wasn't until like, oh, she'd gone to bed I was like oh, that's really weird and then I realised the date and then I was like oh that's why she was being weird <laughs> I completely forgot the uh that's like um it's one of the you've got better things to look forward to nowadays don't you so it's easier to you've got more important things in the calendar than that to focus on so when I suppose that, as the years go by it just becomes a little bit more normal doesn't it Yeah, 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 exactly that. I think that's, I don't know, I, I, I know some people are more like um, sentimental to thoughts like that and stuff, but not, no, not for me, I think it's the, um, I don't know, just, something, just something that happened on a day, it could have been any day really. The the, the funny thing I, I always think of is like uh, somebody who has become disabled, and I might be just talking off a, a whim, but someone who becomes disabled, I think it's weird that it's like that that person's disabled and that's their their list their label now, but it's like no J- James isn't a disabled is 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 still a B but he's just lost a leg. It's like yeah it, yeah he's not really different he's just lost a leg that's all. Yeah, well I t- it must be t- like, I mean it's it's got to be very different to like growing up with a disability and stuff and like how that how those experiences must shape you. Yeah, I mean, um, we always say for the Harry losing his legs was best thing ever because I mean, in school he was, he was thick as pig shit. <laughs> so if he hadn't lost his legs, he wouldn't have got into what he's doing. But is uh, but obviously he lost his leg when legs when he were two. So he, he's never. I think he only just learned to walk when he lo- when he lost them. So like, he doesn't know any different. So it's completely and for all the family, it's like completely normal. Uh God, what a time to lose him, though. He just learnt to walk. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've only got, like, two pictures ever of Harry, like, uh, standing up or something like that from before he lost his leg. Wow. I'll have to find them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's got to be very different, like, growing up with it and stuff. Um, but I, I sort of like to see it mine... I don't know, like my life's split in two halves. It was like yeah. before, before, before accident and after accident. And it's, it, like I sort of regard myself as two different people in, in a sense. Like not, not really even to do with the disability, maybe just sort of the experience. Or it, it just feels like I've had two different lives up until now. Yeah, it changes a lot of perspectives, doesn't it, and things like that. Yeah, massively, massively. It did for me, at least. What got you uh, started in wheelchair sports? So how did you become aware of wheelchair sports? Um, well, I, I tried uh, a basketball for the first time. At, um, it was like a yearly amputee event that I, uh, I go to sometimes. And so I'd gone there. I'd really enjoyed that. But I didn't ever really sort of do anything about it. And then uh, I'd got a, I was like fundraising for a new prosthetic um, which has been like ongoing for a couple of years, but it was like in the local newspapers and stuff. And uh, Jason Owen at Gravesend um, had seen a picture of it was either him or his missus had seen a picture of me um, doing handstands. Uh, so they were like, I think they, I think they just sort of thought I was quite athletic or something. So it contacted me. I'd got an email from them um, saying, "Would you like to come and try it?" So I'd, uh, yeah, I came and tried it, and the rest is history. Really, I was, yeah, just loved it. 
And that, that was to get into the basketball or the rugby? Uh, that was into rugby, sorry, yeah. But I'd, I'd sort of had an experience in the, like doing basketball at the, at the amputee thing at Limpower. It's called. Um, so I'd done that and I, I realised I really liked it. And I'd sort of searched, I had searched for basketball clubs nearby. But there was, there's like the nearest one, I think, was like 45 minute hour driveway. Um, and at the time, like I, you know, like I wasn't committed to doing it that much. To yeah, you to got you need something more local, don't you? When you're first starting off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it, and it was like Gravesend, like 15 minute drive for me, and I, I, I much prefer the the rugby anyway. Like I've always liked contact sport and stuff, so it's yeah, it's perfect. It's the same same. I mean, we started off with a basketball, and it's like uh, we we did, for a long time did basketball and rugby because we thought. It's a good uh, sport to sort of keep the extra training and conditioning up sort of thing in the off-season playing basketball. But after, after a, couple, a lot of years now sort of thing, I've, I've completely stepped away from the basketball now. And I get, to, I get, to, I get to do stuff like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's perfect, really. I'd, I'd quite like to. I've not really had a good go at basketball, you know, like properly. I'd quite like to, but if it... I think if there was a team closer or like some way doing it, I just know that I wouldn't be committed. Or I don't, I don't feel I'd be committed enough to be driving like a couple of hours a week just to train at something that I don't really know. Like I'd do it now for rugby if I was in that situation. I'd happily do it for wheelchair rugby, but yeah. I don't have to commit to two sports doing that. Well, I actually saw on Facebook, I think um, Lyndon set up like a sports club they might be doing basketball i don't know if they are i think they were doing uh league and and stuff it's i think it's more of a junior level thing but that might be something to look at oh cool where's it wait, where's that so, oh at hereford though i mean he's oh no not hereford uh was it it will it will linden so yeah i bet it is hereford don't listen to me mate i'm being stupid <laughs> yeah i mean that's that'd be that'd be more than a couple of hours drive <laughs> I mean, the only basketball team I know around your area is in, in Premier League, the London Titans. They play right in the middle yeah. of really London. Yeah, yeah that's, that's who I was talking about a couple of hours away. Yeah. Well, like 45 minutes an hour. Good team as well, then. They're always like third, third place, second place in Premier League. Mm. It's got, uh, they play, um, they've got, you know, Adi Adepitam. Uh, okay, yeah. They, they used to, um, everyone they used to says it. the guy from the BBC adverts. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Yeah. Yeah. He plays for them. Cool. Freya does. Do you know Freya? I will do. Yeah, I will do. Not not by uh, name until I put a face to it. I, I wouldn't know. Okay. You, you cut off a bit then. But I, I, I just got the no at the end. So. <laughs> That I come across right obnoxious, don't I? Oh, do you know for you? No, get away. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the uh, right, so right, we're drifting off anyway, so we're not even talking about rugby anymore. Uh, Argonauts, uh, oh. this is your second season in the Super League now. So, what yeah. was it actually like last season making the transition from the South Leagues to the Premier? Um. Yeah, I mean, it was. I think I think it was more daunting, like the idea about it first, because I, well, I'd been playing at Gravesend until until last season, but I'd I'd, I'd been wanting to play in Premier, which is obviously I had connections with Argonauts too, so then that's why I joined Argonauts. Um, but I, I mean, I guess we were all on the same page going up from. Uh, I mean, it felt a lot more. It feels a lot more like professional, serious. Um. I think people are planning to win a lot more. I mean, I, I guess you, you do get that in the in the development too, um, but it, it really feels like I don't know. You put everything aside on the pitch, you plan to win, and then and then after you talk and and a yeah. and stuff. I mean, I like it, which I like, you know, I like the intensity, and I do, obviously I prefer it to be like friendly and stuff, like to a certain extent. Um, but it's it's a contact sport, so I think you're always going to get a little bit. Of, um, like adrenaline I think, I think they need it, don't they? It needs to have a, especially at the Super League, it needs to be at that point where it's competitive and people are really having to push for it, opposed to, oh, let's just 
have a friendly and do it all nice. I mean, the games are still friendly, aren't they? It's not as if um, people are doing their hardest to win. They're going out there to win, but they're not going out there to be vicious or anything like that, are they? It's more... Yeah, I think that's the line. I think that's yeah, spot on there, like really. Like do, there's there's certain things that will give like a game advantage and stuff to like I don't know, like just cheeky little moves and stuff, but I think that when it starts to be like vicious and personal and there's no real like gain to to doing it, then it's then it's different. But I mean mostly teams are pretty good at at, at seeing where that line is. Yeah. And there's always gonna be things that happen. You, like sometimes it's just just instinct, you know. When someone gets past, it, so like someone's going past you, just to like try and grab at the nearest bit of. I like I catch myself doing it and stop, you know, like on a shirt or something like that, or like trying to drag. And it's just just instinct straight away because someone's getting the better of you. And yeah. I think you see, you see that in every single sport that you look at, you know. There's just that like frustration and that second of just impulse that you do something. I did exactly um, the same thing. It's the only ever sin bin I ever got, and it were. Uh... Uh, against France uh, I can't remember when we were playing in Cahors but Cyril got past us and uh-huh. it, was getting, it was getting a try and I was just something clicked in my head and I was like he is not he is not getting this try so I just threw myself around his neck and dragged him to the floor <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what came over me hey, you got Simbin for it yeah my only ever one. <laughs> oh wow Oh, nice. I don't, I don't think I've often seen bins. Yeah. But you don't see a lot of them in our sport, to be fair, do you? I think everyone's quite well behaved. They sort of do as they're told, don't they? Yeah. yeah the, the only, in fact, the only ones that I have seen have been when uh, when it's just players arguing against the ref or like... Yeah. Just, just blasting out with something and then uh, and then getting sent off. I don't think I've seen... Seen it, seen any? Oh no, maybe actually did. did what was did that thing with Stuart and Mike? Uh, Mike um, oh, the Euros. Do, no, do you remember? At the, was it the Celtic Cup last year? I think Wales and Scotland. Oh yeah, we were. Uh, when it Gary and um, what's his name? Mellon. Mellon. Oh, uh, that's Mellon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Priest and Mellon. Yeah. Yeah. I, t- I, can't, like, I can't remember if someone got Simbin or not. I can't remember actually, no. Exciting, anyway. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but where, where do you guys train for rugby now then? So if anyone, in, like you, you're saying, you were trying to find a basketball club but no one's near you, if someone's in your area, where would they come and find your training sessions to join in? Yeah, that's good, that's good show. We, we train on Saturdays, so tonight... Um, six o'clock, six to eight at Fairfield Leisure Centre in Dartford. Um, but I think the best way, I mean, you can either just show up or whatever, but probably best if you like contact, uh, like we've got a Facebook page. Um, Sorry, got cats shouting at that. What? <laughs> what do you want? What time is it? It's not even full time yet. Fucking cats. I think it is. Just, they just clawed his way up the couch, put a load of holes in it, and then shouted at me because he's hungry. <laughs> it's yeah, so, yeah, so that's how, you guys got a, you've got two teams as well, haven't you? Because you've got yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of it. We've got yeah, development team and the uh, um, Super League team, um, and yeah, I mean we we bring like players up from the development team, but it's 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 good, you know, and we we all train together as well. Um, we sort of split off for a little bit, sort of between two, and then we have a match together. So it's it's good to help, like bring everybody up to the same level as quickly as possible, really. Um, and, and like a really good atmosphere at the club as well. Yeah, we made a, we, we made a point of that um, last season when we were talking about our players. We've got our new players, kind of thing. What we've been doing all last season was putting on our starting five and getting a lead, and then throwing all the kids on together and they were only playing with each other sort of thing so they were because they weren't playing the games and with our starting fives and our better players they, they weren't developing last season whereas this yeah. season we sort of right we'll just swap one in at a time get a, get one of the young ones in and start playing alongside Wayne and playing alongside me and things like that and we see the they learn a lot more that way 
Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I mean, it went well last week for us, although we'd lost with uh, Ty. Um, he, he played he played blindingly. And uh, I think it was because of the absence of Lewis sort of, that he'd got a chance, because we don't really have the same... Uh, um, I don't know. Don't, don't know the way through. Was it because we we're not as good of a team yet as as you guys, for example? Like we we struggle to get that lead in the first place a lot of the time. Like that that that's hard work. So I think that's what we'd be working towards. You know, when we can get that sort of lead on people, that we can start to uh, experiment with new people on the team and give them a chance where where it's not too much pressure as well. Because I, I think that's hard, especially. I mean, Ty did really well, but in that in that situation last weekend, he, he probably felt a lot of pressure. Because because it's we're playing going in the deep bad. end, isn't it? It's a bit of a here you go, I sink or swim, kid. Yeah, yeah, really, really, really very much so. I thought he did um, great, to be honest. Watching him, his, his chair defense is brilliant. When you got um, oh, like Sir Higgins and pe- people, all and um, oh, what's the other guy's name? He'll Matt. come back to me later. Yeah, Matt, yeah, but he, uh, yeah, Matt Wallop and stuff. His chair position were brilliant. Getting the pick and getting his wheel in front to stop, stop him. Stopped a lot of tries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they were trying to target him for a while, and then and then sort of stopped. He's yeah, he's, he's very smart with defence. He's like his, his whole play is, is is really smart. And even when he, I think I think what I like most is like in that game, for example, something will happen. You can explain the mistake to him. You know, he doesn't take it too personally. He wants to know what had gone wrong. You can explain yeah. it to him, and then that's what he's learned, or, or or very quickly, and he won't be making those same mistakes again. So, uh, yeah, he's 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 going to progress quick. I think. I mean, he has done he has done that. I think, especially now. I like that. Yeah. So, who's your next game? Uh, that's next game's against you guys. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the date. It's the start of May. I love it somewhere. Um, I'd have yeah, it on the phone, but I'm using phone as camera. Yeah, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, we got, and that's the way. Yeah, we we at Halifax for that. Are you doing a double header? Are you playing another team as well when you come up, or is it just uh, one game? No, yeah, um, no. We'd we'd managed to do it last year, but this year I don't think the fixtures could, for whatever reason, couldn't be arranged or resorted. So um, we're making however many different trips up uh, this season, but which in a way I think. Um, you know, like uh, last season when we had you on one day and Leeds on the next, you know, we're bollocks by the Sunday because yeah, it's their the games. Yeah. To to play back to back, you're just like absolutely knackered. So I, I don't think you get your full potential. But yeah, plus um, we took you to the pub after the game. Yeah, I think actually, yeah, that that bit was probably yeah that bit was the most important bit. Actually, you're more knackered from that night. We were more knackered from the night, yeah, than a few of us. <laughs> Uh, I won't do names. No, there's still that uh, that newlyweds looking around for people putting up wanted oh, posters of you. Lot. I can't believe that happens. <laughs> well, t- t- <laughs> tell them the story. What happened? God. <laughs> yeah, we'd uh, so we were at the pub back with you guys. Uh, had a few drinks, and then we 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 met this like very drunk guy invite us, inviting us into a wedding reception. Um, we were saying no, first of all, and he was very... Oh, mate, if my if my phone dies, I've not got my charger in, by the way. Um, oh, don't worry about it, mate. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the story short and sweet. Anyway, yeah, so he's, he's invited us in. We went in. We didn't realise that this guy was just a friend of one of the bride's friends that he'd like, hardly known anyway. It, we it all went the in. the groom or the parents or anything like that. No, it was just a. Ra- it was probably just a rant. He probably had as much authority to invite people in as we did. <laughs> Invited us into the the, the wedding reception. Um, yeah, we we got a few drunk people there going and picking out the cheesecake and feeding it to him. John John Ashdown feeding it off to to just random people at the reception of this thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it, <laughs> it was really bad and. We didn't. We didn't know at the time as well. The bride. The bride. Which isn't funny. The bride had cancer, so it was like sort of like a quite a bit of a sombre wedding. Like they they were getting married to like. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! It was yeah. Just it was it was something that Ricky Gervais could have written. Like it was that <laughs> awkward. I feel like. 
And the more I look back on it and the more I think about it, the more awkward it gets. I, yeah. Oh, I love that story. <laughs> What's his name? Was it, is it Ash or John or Ash who was doing the cake? That was singing, that was John. John, yeah. John is singing outside from... We've got that on, on the videos as well. I fucking love that. It was so funny. Yeah. Never laughed so uh, hard. He's got, he's got some cracking songs. I thought he was just making it up on the spot, me. It, it, does, it does look like a lot of that. Yeah, I thought that. There was, there was one of them about uh, Auntie Mabel's tits in the mangle or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, maybe he does style some of it. <laughs> oh, I've lost it now. Yeah. yeah that was- well, BBC were recording this on the way out, weren't they, for their... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's supposed, yeah, to, be, that's supposed to be on TV soon, isn't it? Isn't it supposed to be on TV soon? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I've asked a couple of times. I asked Fred a couple of times and then just gave up. Cause he didn't really seem to know either. Yeah, we're watching it. We, we, we're working on uh, my dad's house over in Hull. And we decided it on TV while we were working, trying to, hoping that you guys would turn up on it, but it hadn't turned up yet. Oh. No, I've heard like it might even be over a couple of episodes or something. It might be, yeah. They might be follow, break it up into a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I think some of the footage you had a GoPro on your chair, didn't you? Yeah, they put the uh, chest strap thing on, so it like uh, was on my chest. There, they did that a couple of times. Remember, because Wayne were telling me off, because we were. I was doing things in my chair that were like to make the video look good and stuff like that. And he was like, you're not defending properly. Stop. <laughs> You're having a proper go at me for like using the camera and recording. <laughs> trying to, I, was, I was like watching you go past me and I was doing this. <laughs> Wayne's like, push the chair. You're recording as well, isn't you? Yes, yeah, so I think we kick. Yeah. We've got us coming up soon, but I'll uh, I'll probably bring it to an end there, uh, mate, because your phone's gonna die. I'll let you go find your charger. I'm on one percent, and this phone now it's just flashing. It's <laughs> like a copy from the '60s or something. That's good, love it. Yeah. Um. So we've got our game coming up soon. Um. Thanks for having a talk with us, mate. I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna have a play with it now and see if it all works right. But thanks for talking to us. Yeah, nice one, mate. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, nice to speak to you. Yeah, I'll see you again soon, yeah? See you later, mate. Yeah, yeah, take care. Probably a away game. Yeah, catch you in a bit, dude. Catch you in a bit, man. Take care.